my parents, uh, John and Edith, uh, met here in Portland. Uh, I graduated from Tigard High. I went out for wrestling as a 123 pound freshman and the basic motivation was self uh, protection. Every year I got, I got better and naturally with success, my self image, self esteem increased. Learning that I'm my own biggest enemy and I had to beat myself before I could hope to beat anybody else. And so you learn the life values of the sport. I was state champion as a, <laughs> as a junior and my senior year, uh, I had a draw in the finals. And those days, uh, the referee at the end of the match picked whoever he wanted. There wasn't any, uh, there's only one vote and that was the referee. He voted for the other guy. I liked wrestling and I wanted to keep wrestling. And the only way I could keep wrestling is to go on to college. That took me up multi-levels, going to Oregon State and under Dale's tutelage. As a sophomore, I placed uh, fourth, and then I placed fourth also my senior year. And then, uh, no, my junior year I placed fourth. Senior year, I uh, tore a rotator cuff. But it was a lot of fun wrestling in college. Uh, I was a high school coach in Coos Bay, Oregon, and we got involved with exchanging high school kids overseas. Five of those kids on that team became national champions in their careers. Three of them, we had no idea at the time, but three of them, six years later, would become FILA medal winners. Uh, the first world champion for the USA was Rick Sanders of Lincoln High School. And this is in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the FILA World Freestyle Championships. And about an hour or two later, Fred Fosard became America's second ever gold medal winner. And then 190 pounder Hank Schenk was a bronze medal winner. Imagine that, three kids, six years later, are FILA World Medals, medalists. The summer of 1963, when I was coach of that team uh, from Oregon to Japan, we drew a lot of attention to ourselves nationally uh, by starting this exchange program. And the Amateur Athletic Union heard about what we were doing in Oregon, and they called and interviewed me, and I went to Indianapolis in 1973, and I was an assistant in the AU headquarters where we had a roughly national governing body headquarters for around 15 national governing bodies. During that period of time, we I know we broke records. We had over a thousand different high school college teams go abroad. And I don't think that's ever been equaled since then. In 1985, I was sent to see could the concept of Goodwill Games work. Started off with 1986 with America sending a team uh, to Moscow for the inaugural games. I would be a coordinator between that sport and uh, the Goodwill Games Organizing Committee. And the national governing bodies did business as usual with their counterparts in Russia. And it worked out uh, politically very, very good. Then on the return, uh, the return games were in Seattle. It's a fascinating experience in my life. 96 is Atlanta Games. Atlanta, I was uh, working with USA Wrestling, being a member of their staff. Sydney Olympics, uh, fantastic experience. Uh, FILA said that it was the best Olympics that 
he had ever seen. That was Milan Ersigan, president of FILA, and he had been going to the Olympic Games since 1952. He said that Sydney's job was the best ever. And so that ended my wrestling Olympic experience. I met and married a girl that I met on a blind date at Oregon State, arranged by my uh, teammate, Larry Wright. Uh, we now have two kids. Uh, we've been married for 52 years and are enjoying retirement here in Oregon. As far as our kids, you know, they could bridge on the edge of the mat before they were potty trained. I mean, our life really kind of revolved all around wrestling and it's, it's been a kick. I went through the, uh, the process and I didn't really expect to be selected. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be recognized and sincerely appreciated.